Welcome to episode 3 of the mini project, we're going to have a quick episode today, I haven't got much time to film, but we are going to tackle the steering, we've got all the upgraded parts already, we've got a aluminium turnbuckle steering rod here from Tamiya, it, um, it's going to be a lot lighter than the standard steel one, and it's adjustable as well, you can see the, the adjuster just there. We've also got the aluminium steering kit from Yeah Racing, a nice anodized blue colour should match the actual linkage set you can see here got a power HD servo I think this is metal geared I'm not quite sure it doesn't say on it yes yeah, metal geared you can see in the in the product code there metal geared but it's the fastest servo I could find it was about 13 pounds which is really cheap and we're going to be fitting the motor as well this is just a Tamiya silver can standard motor so we're fitting that as well move all that out of the way just show you the updates on the project now since the last episode since episode two in which we tackled the rear suspension you can see there the shocks on both sides of the suspension I actually fitted the front suspension got the replacement chassis piece because of the snapped off ball joint in there so replace the chassis piece and then fit the front suspension so that's all sorted exactly the same both sides and also fitted the front shocks made them up and fit them and the front bumper as well which looks really nice really like that front bumper nice and stubby and um, curls around the shocks a little bit just to give them a bit of protection so yeah the front's looking really good so all we're going to do today is fit the steering and the motor so I hope you enjoy handily the steering is somewhat semi-assembled from Yeah Racing got these arms which are already attached already secured on, they might need a bit more tightening, they're a bit loose but I'll do that later so this is the rough order in which you um, assemble the, suspen the suspension the steering the instruction sheet here we've got one for the mo5 and one for the mo6 because the steering fits both rcs so i've already made the links these are the two final links from the three racing linkage set so i'm going to set them aside for now we're going to assemble the steering so one side place the bearings in one like that and one goes on the underside it might fall out like that have this little tube here that fits through them, you have a little aluminium washer which fits on there. Then you have that that goes there, and you get a longer screw which goes through that bridge. Let's see if I can get it on. Difficult with one hand, and that fits through all of it like that. Shift all that out of the way, and that fits. Let's see if I'm getting close. So you have that hole there, that hole there. So the big screw fits in that big hole. And you have a little screw that fixes that bridge to there. So I shall assemble this steering and show you what it looks like afterwards. So I fit these bearings in. I've got one bearing at the top, one bearing now on the floor. Where did that go? everything falls on the floor okay so another bearing on the bottom we have this sort of tubular spacer that fits through all of them like that we have the little aluminium washer on top and the big screw that goes through the bridge and then through everything else on top there you go once you get the screw through they're all attached together so that's that in there and we have a little hex screw which goes through that hole there and then just screw these in gently make sure you don't strip any of the threads out there go. once you get it started it should just seat itself in There's one, and this should be much more responsive, much stiffer than the standard one that comes with the kit. But obviously, the bearings in there won't be bearings, they'll be bushings, the plastic bushings. So, bearings are much better, aluminium is much lighter and much stronger as well, so you get more responsive steering, much faster steering as well. 
there you go, that's all in, sorted. That's really nice smooth steering, really nice, really nice. Okay, so just attach the rest of it up. I did actually fit those ball joints on the on the wrong side, and let's go on the bottom instead of the top, which you didn't realise. So the final step is just to snap these turnbuckles into place. So get my pliers. Need to have one facing one way, one facing the other, like that. So one fits on the actual steering knuckle. I need it on the stand. If you didn't notice already, I'm actually using my new stand. This is from eBay. It's from a original genuine eighties Tamiya race kit. It's quite a nice stand. It looks really nice. Something a bit different than the aluminium ones. So snap that one in. And then move the steering across. Just move it that way. I want to be quite careful not to slip here, otherwise you'll um, scratch the nice blue aluminium there. quite tricky to do when you're doing this on camera. Like that. There we go. Sorted. So look at that really fast. Really stiff steering. There's a bit of play in that bottom arm there, so I may have to shim it down a little bit. Just so it's um, nice and smooth. But yeah, really nice steering there. Looks really good as well. Awesome. The next step is to actually put the pinion on the motor, and there's a handy little tool which I haven't seen before. So we'll use that in a minute. We've got one of these cardboard plates, like the TLO one, so that should just fit on. Make sure that's lined up with the holes. And we've got this is the pinion gear here, and it goes on in this direction. And this tool places over it. And the idea is see that you can actually see the pinion the grub screw and the pinion gear there and the idea is you actually force the pinion gear out to the very outer edge of that plastic shroud and then you tighten it tighten the grub screw down like that and then that's perfectly spaced for the gears inside there hopefully so yeah nice little handy tool that Obviously only used for the MO5 because they're different gears for different RCs, but yeah, that's quite cool. I haven't seen that before. So now I've just got to fit it to the to the MO5. Before you fit the motor, you actually need to take notes of these. Now these are the different screws, different mounting holes for the motor, for the different pinion gears, different te um, for the different number of teeth on the pinion. We're using a 20 tooth pinion, so we're going to be using that hole there and that hole there. If you're using a 16, you'd use that one there that one there and then an 18 tooth pinion would be that one there and that one there so you just need to take note of that before you actually fit the motor but we'll be using those two so that one goes in the top that one goes in the bottom one try and get the orientation of the holes just right so it actually goes in you also need to grease the pinion gear so put a bit of tamiya grease on there just whack a load on just send it in and then I need a screwdriver. What's that? Obviously you can't see inside there, so just start screwing until you feel it thread. I think that's got it. Nope, that's got it, there you go. And try and screw them in at equal rates. There you go. Like that. I will be upgrading the motor later on, but the Standard silver can now is just fine for what I want it for. And then there you go, that's the motor in. And there you go. Best way to do it is just to spring the front drive shaft, make sure everything's moving nice and it's actually turning the motor. And that sounds fine. So all that's left to do now is put the servo in. So this is the new type of servo that I'm testing. It's from Power HD 13 kilogram servo. It's actually the fastest Metal Gear servo I could find on Model Sport. It's only £13 and looks really nice. This aluminium heat sink here looks really nice. 
and you can see the code there, it's a digital servo as well so it looks really nice and usually servos come with some spare parts and these are all the parts that it came with so you've got all these various different servo horns that fit straight onto the servo there so you've got four different ones loads of different mount positions, you've got some screws to hold it down with got these little spacers here, not sure what they're for they might be to um, stop vibration yeah, looks like they fit over into them and then it comes with some little screws to actually mount the servo horn to the servo but being as we're using the Tamiya servo saving kit which is consists of this, this is the actual part of the servo horn that fits onto the servo with the different splines in there then you've got this little ring here which fits over there like that and then this is the actual servo horn for the MO5 and that fits on like that and the idea is that if you um, have a bump in the steering it transfers up to the steering horn and this twists but the bottom stays still and this ring expands out so it actually saves from strip stripping gears inside the servo so it saved all my RCs from stripping stripping gears so that fits on there you have a little white spacer just there that fits in and then you screw it on now these are the screws that came with the servo but they're way too short and they won't actually screw into there so I've got a longer one same thread just make sure it's the same thread and that fits all the way through and then we use the aluminium hex driver no, rather hex driver just to cinch that down don't strip it out it's all solid no movement no play you see it turns the servo there so if you can actually if you can actually get this in closer you can actually see that ring expand when there's a lot of force put on there you see it expand there that just saves from stripping any gears in the servo there you go so yeah so that's the servo horn attached so I'm going to actually put it into the car now but yeah looks really good just before we fit the servo there is actually a correction on the instruction sheet just wait for that to focus in you can see here this is the original chassis and with that you just screw the servo straight in but with the correction there's actually a piece there A7 which you use to mount the, sh mount the servo into the chassis which is this piece here with some new screws so a little correction there that's added into the manual and I also got it when I got the extra chassis piece so you use, I've never actually got that before but nice of Tammy to include it now this is going to be tricky so I may have to fit this in off camera because it's going to be quite fiddly so be back in a minute before we fit the servo just a quick note I actually had to cut there's a little, there was a little shroud a little protector around these wires here you can see it there I've actually cut it off because it was restricting the movement of the wires and I couldn't actually fit it in there so I just cut it out with a little blade to make sure I didn't snip the wires and I didn't at all which is good so yep so just cut that a little bit off and I should have a little bit more movement in the wires now so yeah now we're going to fit it and I'm going to do it off camera because it is quite tricky to get it in there and get it all sorted so off camera job so the this is the original steering rod that came with the kit there. and this is the aluminium one the difference between them but I can feel that that one is much heavier they're the same length more or less but this has actually got an adjuster in the middle so you can actually get like a wrench on that and you can adjust the the different lengths of this including these so it give you a bit more adjustability in the steering so I'm going to fit the rod ends now and then we'll attach it to the RC so I'm just mocking it up now obviously I'm going to take it all off, I've got to centre the servo which all you have to do is just turn the servo on and it will centre itself and then you'll get the right position for where that is, you can remount that and get this the perfect measurement with the front there this might be a bit more a bit trickier that, out, put your finger, so there you go lots of colour on there, looks quite nice actually quite like that so now that's solid up there there's not much play in the system, it's mainly coming from here which I'll just shim down later on yeah, looks really good so that's the steering setup, done so I'll adjust that all off camera when it's all ready 
and center it all, get it all nice and straight. But yeah, it looks really good. So now it's time to tidy up. That's it for this episode of the mini project. We've got all the steering in, looks really nice. Just got to center it all off camera and shim that bit down there just so there's no play. And then we've also got the motor in as well. So next episode we'll be finishing off the, the whole chassis, putting the wheels on, putting the rest of the electronics on and tidying it all up, finishing some odd jobs. But yeah, really enjoying this build, really enjoying how it looks, different colours. And um, we've got the red, the silver, the blue and the orange. Quite like the look. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you want to leave any feedback or comments, leave them down below or on the Facebook and Twitter pages. Links are in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on RC Projects. Bye.